Oh, oh, sorry, fam. Um, newspaper guy, you were just getting into the story, fam. I apologize. I know we had a show. I had my hat on. Uh, Ukraine aid expedited. You're not going to like say hi to everybody? You're not going to say welcome? Oh, because to this is cash. ridiculous over here, fam. I don't even want to say anything because I have no words over here. The fact is that Biden revives the Lend-Lease program, but the Dems, they want to give more. Hi, everybody. Pasta Jardula here. Fam, again, you're not coming from anywhere. You're just, you know, you're overacting. It's really fake. Hold on. If you're going to do it, you got to you got to do it like authentically. Okay. Right. Be your authentic self. You know, remember, Miser, you got to know where you're coming from, fam. It's just very it's just very cheesy because you're not really coming from anywhere. OK. You know, fam, I try. <laughs> I try. I try. I try. I try. But, you know, no matter how hard I try, you and Steve, you like to just give me the old da da do. I'm bringing Steve kidding. into this because I had your, your back yesterday in that little situation we had. Of course you did because you have, you're on the side of right and wrong. You know no, saying? because, yeah. Because why? Because you wanted to take my side? Please get out of here. Stop. <laughs> Not kidding anybody, fam. Everybody, I hope you thank uh, thank you so much for joining in today. Uh, I don't know if you caught this morning's show. Uh, we had uh, Dr. Peter McCullough on and John Locke, John Leake, excuse me, who was a co-author. John Locke. <laughs> John Locke, John Leake, co-author of his book. Um, talking about a lot of things when it comes to uh, Pfizer and whatnot. Um, we're going to continue the conversation today. We have a couple, we have a section, and then we're going to go right into it with Steve Kirsch. Steve Kirsch will be here later today. Fam, um, Rockfin only on that one, I think. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the Pfizer data dumps. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can you can introduce him and start. We'll introduce him. We'll say hi, and then we'll jump on over to Rockfin because we yeah. we don't want to poke the bear, fam. I know you like poking the bear, and then when you go to Moscow, we'll see how you like poking bears over there. Okay, because Russian bears over there, fam, you shouldn't poke them. But we'll see. I know how you like to poke the bear at YouTube. Fam, yes, I'm just gonna refrain from commenting on anything. That was just said. Well, Thomas Hutchinson says, just wondering, Pasta, are you a newspaper guy? Absolutely, uh, Tom. I got my newspaper hat. I got my newspaper here. I am a full-fledged newspaper guy because <laughs> to me, reading the newspaper, the mainstream newspaper, is like watching tells at a poker game. And the deep state, the mainstream media, everybody just exposes themselves. You can understand where they're going from. Pam. We're not even talking about a story that's in here about baby formula. This is like, we got to start talking about this. We might want to have to do a story tomorrow about what's going on with baby formula. Uh, it's kind of crazy right now. There's a sh shortage of it because of a recall, uh, supply chains. And this is something that's a little bit uh, alarming, but uh not in today's show, but maybe in the future we got to talk about it. I saw it as a newspaper guy today. Fam. Yes, fam. So you want to get started? Let's just jump right into it, fam. Let's go. All right, guys. So tune in because we're going to have Steve Kirsch and, uh, to talk about the, the Pfizer data dumps, which I think is part of the reason why Roe v. Wade, they were distracting um, a lot of people with that. There's still, I mean, that's all these progressives are talking about, right? Because they're so easily manipulated and they're like, oh my God, they're going to take away Roe v. Wade. Uh, let's all like do something and vote Democrat and vote harder. Yeah. Because the Democrats haven't been in control this whole time and could have done it years ago, but okay. Um, and Could I say that it was a distraction from both topics we're talking about today, right? Right. Not only that, this, what you're about to expose yeah. right now, they don't want people talking about this because this is purely just a complete thievery and stealing from the treasury from your tax dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Well, yeah, they're distracting from that. I mean, I'm not exposing anything. I mean, I'm essentially just putting out there what's what's happening. Um, and 
this is what people people should be really mad. I mean, you have the French burning banks, you have the French always protesting, and then you have Americans crying about uh, this. I'm not saying that you know this wouldn't be a bad thing, but they manipulate that issue every single time, and every single time, like clockwork, the liberals and the progressives are fall for it. And then they start talking about it nonstop, and then nothing changes, and then they move on to the next thing, and then it always comes back because they know they can use that issue every single time. So yeah. let's talk about Zelensky first, because Zelensky actually uh, posted a picture of a soldier, a Ukrainian soldier with neo-Nazi emblem, actual Nazi emblem to be actual pre precise. And um, then he deleted it and then he pretended nothing happened. He pretended it was never there. But um, we're going to talk a little bit about this because that was yesterday was Victory Day, right? And we had Gonzalo and we were talking about everything that happened with um, in Moscow at the Red Square and how people were celebrating, commemorating the defeat of Nazism. And the entire time, of course, the mainstream media was and continued making it about Russians being Nazis, right? Mm -hmm. But Zelensky, who is Jewish, <laughs> posted on his official Instagram, and you can tell it's official because there's the little blue check, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what he posted. So this is a picture of the Ukrainian soldier, right? And I'm going to go over what this is right here because it's this. It's not a skull, uh, skull bones type of thing. It's an actual, he's an actual Ukrainian soldier. I would think it was like a skull bones thing if it was like some punk kid, like going into Hot Topic and wearing like a t-shirt. Hot Topic. This is, this is a Ukrainian soldier. This is like not somebody that's, you know, wearing this just for, for fun. Like, so, okay. Cause somebody was like, oh, that's just a skeleton and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, you got to look at the, the background on it. And you know what? I wouldn't even be this obnoxious about it, guys, if they weren't the same liberals that spot, you can't even do hand motions anymore because they say that's a white supremacist sign. If the same liberals weren't completely dismissing this very real threat of Nazism in Ukraine, and it's nothing new, of course, but RT had an article on this, of course, and um, they kind of talk about what happened. So they say Ukraine Zelensky shares the image of a soldier with Nazi insignia. As Russia celebrated the defeat of fascism in World War II, President Zelensky of Ukraine shared an image of a soldier wearing an SS patch. And um, it's the it's called the Death's the Death's Head patch. And it's uh, an elite, a patch of an elite Nazi Waffen SS unit, which in German would be pronounced Waffen SS unit. And while the picture was soon deleted, they said from his social media, and you can go and look at his Instagram, it's not going to be there. The Ministry of Defense in Kiev also posted the photo. The offending item was placed on Instagram and Telegram by Zelensky on Monday. In it, a soldier next to the artillery gun wears the dead's head or the Totenkopf insignia of the 3rd SS Panzer Division, a unit of elite Nazi soldiers infamous for committing new committing numerous war crimes and massacres of French civilians and Polish Jews. Zelensky himself is of Jewish heritage. <laughs> and advocacy groups consider the Dead's Head logo a hate symbol used by neo-Nazis and other white supremacists. It was removed and then the Ukraine Ministry of Defense posted it as well. And you guys can see here the Ukraine Defense Ministry reposting the picture on the uh, top left and you know, and this is for 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 Bloody Sunday. So just this keeps happening, right? This keeps happening because they can't hide it. These um, Azov battalion people, these Nazis, these people from the C-14, they have zero problem admitting who they are. They're very proud of who they are, what they stand Absolutely. for. Absolutely, yeah. The, the only people that have a problem admitting who they are are the, the government of the United States, the government of, of Europe, the Western media, and of course, a lot of the liberals and the progressives that say, well, they're just, you're trying to say every Ukrainian is a Nazi, and that's just not the case. No, we're saying that the people in the military and with a lot of government power have infiltrated that. And yeah. so when these people spend all time talking about Trump supporters being fascist and then the truckers being Nazis, 
you kind of have to throw it in their face that actually, wait a minute, these people are the real paramilitary Nazis and your country's funding them. And we're going to talk about how much funding they're getting. It is insane. Um, so, fam. Yes, fam. We talked about how Putin described the uh, Ukrainian operation as a necessary and a need. So he talked about the um, neo-Nazi militias and how they're infiltrated into the national military, which is what I was just saying. And the media has been describing before the conflict had been describing them as neo-Nazis. But now, as I think a, a bunch of us have put out, you know, the gray zone, why all a lot of us here have put out now they the New York Times and the Washington Post, they refer to them as far right groups or far right nationalist groups. They're like, what do you mean by Nazis? These are just far right nationalist groups. Since Russian troops entered Ukraine in February, stashes of Nazi paraphernalia have been found in the houses and bases of these militia members and social media accounts run by the Ukrainian government have posted similar images of soldiers wearing Nazi and far right symbols. Remember when the was it NATO uh, posted a Nazi emblem? It was like it was like some sort of holiday and they posted that. Uh, So this has been happening for a while. Now, the Ukrainian press, the Ukrainian press, one of the main ones, Euromaidan PR, and I love how they call themselves Euromaidan, Euromaidan PR because that's essentially what they are. Euro this, <laughs> this real, really obnoxious side-by-side comparison mm-hmm. of this Russian woman versus this Ukrainian woman. So first photo, a Ukrainian woman. Second photo, a Russian woman. And first of all, it's dumb because there's a lot of Russian women that look like the Ukrainian woman to begin with. So this is stupid. But they try to make this comparison that, you know, oh, one is well put together, strong and and beautiful. And the other one's just wacky looking and she's all messed up. And it's just like and they posted this on Mother's Day, the day before the um, May 9th, which is like, you know, it's gross. It's gross. They keep doing this to continue dividing people, right? And remember when Zelensky said that Ukrainians and Russians were brothers, that they were, that the the Russians shouldn't be persecuted for speaking Russian, that, it, you know, they were like one people in, in 2014. Well, that's completely gone, right? Mm-hmm. And they continued, they continued posting this right here. You can see the banner flashing in New York Times Square to recognize May 9th as Russian shame day. So the day that the Russians who held out, like, I think it was, uh, God, I I don't have the numbers right next to me, but it's like they held out like 1,400 and something days in fighting with the German army. Nobody came close to holding out that long. And they lost millions and millions of, of soldiers and they're, they're now saying that May 9th is Russian shame day. They're not even letting them have that part of history, which you can't rewrite. That happened. Um, and so this was a UWC launches Russian shame day campaign to divert attention from four celebrations of victory in Russia on May 9th and instead flood social media with the images of atrocities committed by the Russian army in Ukraine. Huh. Unbelievable. Pam, do you have anything to say? No, I mean, it was just so fuck. It's so funny because <coughs> you showed that post from Euromaidan. Euromaidan uh, was used as like a, t- uh, a Twitter hashtag. And the the account started on the first day of the protest out there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of dark money behind this whole mentality. It kind of echoes the Orange Revolution. You know what I'm saying? Um So it's just kind of crazy that these are the same people who are pushing the uprising, who are still putting this stuff out there to this day. Um, And yeah, I just wanted to point that out when you put the Euromaidan up there, because it's the same culprits. It's the same people. It's the same, you know, anti-Russian mindset, this, you know, media of sorts that was kind of spawned from a lot of George Soros money and whatnot. That's still pushing the same type of narrative in uh, the Ukraine right now. 
and kind of trying to, you know, dress it up and doll it up for a United States American uh, audience to see and present this image of like, you know, freedom fighters and people who didn't want this awful Russian government and whatnot. So it's the same players that are still in effect. And it will be the same players when this military conflict ends. Yeah, and what's really, to me, really the, like the worst part of this is that they're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to yeah. act like Russia didn't have, even if you're at war right now, you know, um, for example, yesterday I went over how Vladimir Putin thanked the Ukrainians that lost their life at that time after World War or during World War II when they were going, uh, they were part of the USSR, right? And they were defeating the uh, Nazi regime. He he's commemorated and thanked them and and all of that. But Ukraine is like, no, let's shame Russians, even though Russia was a huge part of the the USSR, which was a huge part of why this happened you know the soviet army was able to to do this we wouldn't have we would have a completely different existence if that didn't happen we really would we truly would we would have like the man in the high castle sort yeah. of existence right and so i i just i can't believe that they're getting away with rewriting history when history this at least this part of history we know is extremely well documented and um, they're able to just because we have such bad education and so much propaganda, they're able to get the children to follow along with this. And um, they're not hiding it. So Sky News, which is an outlet, I don't think would ever hire any one of us here. Probably not, fam. Um, Wyatt found this and people have been sharing it all over the place. So he wrote incredible Sky News host asked Russian deputy UN rep Dmitry Polanski about the British defense secretary comparing Russian troops to Nazis, then cuts him off after he pulls out the tablet and shows the audience Zelensky's Instagram post of an SS Totenkopf wearing Ukrainian soldier. So this is this is part of that, right? This was the, the picture on Instagram and people were trying to say this isn't Zelensky's Instagram, that this isn't a big deal, but then why would they cut him off? So let's just watch the, the quick video. The British Defence Secretary's statement today, Ben Wallace, uh, who talking about Victory Day, more or less said that uh, today's Russian forces are dishonouring their grandfathers who fought the Nazis. Uh, and he said, and I quote in there, that uh, what's, what Russian forces are doing now in Ukraine is mirroring fascism. Well, it's entirely uh, to, uh, up to his conscience to say such blasphemous, th blasphemous things. I can only uh, reply by saying that uh, it's absolutely disastrous and shameless uh, what the uh, UK is doing right now, forgetting everything what we were fighting about. And I will only give you one, one example. I will show you what, what, what appeared uh, today at the official page of President Zelensky. Here, you can see it in Instagram. And th this is an uh, emblem. You see it right, right now. I will, I will make it bigger. So that's the emblem. Do you know what it is? It's uh, Totenkopf. It's an, it's an emblem of if a German division, uh, SS division in the Second World War. So he published on the, on the Victory Day uh, an emblem of fighter of uh, right sector okay. with this emblem saying that this is a symbol. No, no don't interrupt me, sir, please. This is a symbol of uh, fight against uh, Nazism, as he sees it. This was deleted uh, after half an hour, but of course we have a copy of this. And do you know that this Tottenkopf division was responsible for murder of 100 uh, Britons uh, in France uh, uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the Second World War? So it means that uh, UK now is covering Ukrainian authorities, which display uh, Nazi symbols uh, right. during the Victory Day. And these uh, Nazi symbols were used by the same regiments that killed British people. Uh, okay. Isn't that a little bit strange? I, 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 I'm, I'm only interrupting you because you've had, you, 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 you've had your say. We, you. We've run out of time, Mr. Pol Polyansky. Thank you very much indeed to talk to you. And I uh, should just say that uh, those uh, images that uh, were shown by Mr. Polyansky, uh, well, we haven't been able to independently verify them. Uh, and of course you haven't, Sky 
So they deny it, right? They deny it. He says, oh, sorry, you're running out of time. You've already had your say. But he started interrupting him way before the guy could have even possibly run his time, right? So yeah. if they say something adversarial to what he's allowed and told to show, they have to cut him off. Because in, in when you work for a network that literally only allows you to say, a, a, you know, a, a, when you work for a network that only allows you to say a certain narrative, then... You yeah. can't freely actually be a journalist and be like, wow, that's terrible. Yes, this is wrong. Let's yes, you're absolutely right. This is, you know, this is wrong. You can just say whatever. He could have said, you know, what's going on is so sad that both sides are losing human beings, whatever. But this is also he, he can't even do that because the, the only thing they're allowed to say is that Russians are terrible, that Russians are Nazis, that Russians should be ashamed. You're not allowed to even give them any sort of humanity, like some human character or anything like that. So it's. Yeah, it reminds me of two of the time. Remember, Elizabeth Warren got cornered by Tulsi, and Tulsi asked her a question. They're like, "Oh, that's very interesting. We're going to go to a commercial break now." <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, sir. You ran out of time. Roll tape, Ted. Roll the. T hurry, hurry up, Ted. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. I mean, that's what they do. Yeah, it's just so obvious and so blatant, and it's just so gross. And there are just like very few people that are being fair in their coverage of Ukraine and Russia. And of course, most of them is coming from the Russian media because none of the Western media is doing it. And then when we cover things, right, any if it's at all any and favorable to Russia, we're Russian assets. We're pro Putin. How much is the Kremlin playing paying you? Like, I wish the I wish they were paying us in rubles right now because yeah the <laughs> market is crashing it is Bitcoin everything yeah well that's the thing right now is that the a, a lot of Bitcoin is possibly falling because the fact that fiat's falling and it's tied to it it's like oh man this really sucks <laughs> I mean it's bad it's bad yeah. Yeah, it's very bad. And what what happened to all the Bitcoiners that said that Bitcoin wouldn't fall because it was a decentralized currency? Well, let's see. I mean, what what a lot of the Bitcoiners are doing now is encouraging everybody to buy, to buy at this low price. Right. But, uh, I don't know about that. I mean, the people with money aren't going to be able to buy. That's the thing. That's how it's always worked, right? Because, yep. again, you're still dependent on the system. And as long as you're dependent on the current system, you're still going to be at its whim when it, it falls, unfortunately. So it, it sucks. It really does suck right now. So um, on top of all of that, Joe Biden just signed today a Ukraine Democracy Defense Lend Lease Act. Remember, we talked about this. Well, he signed it today. And this is, of course, of only 2022 it could go on till 2023, 2024, however long they need. And um, it's going to basically make it easier to streamline money right into Ukraine's hands without him having to really go through Congress, go to anything just to actually do it. And Glenn Greenwald tweeted uh, something and he said, um, Biden sent to Congress a request of 33 billion in a new spending to fuel the war in Ukraine on the top of more than two billion already sent without legislation. So both parties decided that wasn't enough and thus agreed to quickly approve for 40 billion instead. So remember the 33 billion, we were all like, what the hell, this is disgusting. Well, they added just seven, three, uh, seven, seven billion more. Yeah, seven billion. The jokes write themselves at this point. The jokes write themselves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and not for nothing. You're out protesting at Kavanaugh's house and stuff uh, on a conservative judge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thinking that you're going to get some change on an opinion piece. Meanwhile, nobody's paying attention to what's going on with the Pfizer releases. Nobody's paying attention to the fact that they're going to give $40 billion away while gas is up to $6 a gallon in Vegas over here and hit like $4, $4 a ga gallon in Arkansas, where it's supposed to be the, the lowest in the whole friggin' nation, right? And, you know, people are one paycheck away from being out in the streets. Homeless numbers climb. It's over 800,000, according to some data analysis out there. It's ridiculous. Nobody's paying attention to it. Why aren't they at Nancy Pelosi's house? Why aren't they at McCarthy's house? Why aren't they at Schumer's house? 
Why aren't they at McConnell's house? Why aren't they at Lindsey Graham's house who's saying we got to turn on the fire hose, fam, and keep funding Ukraine because he's actually flirting. He wants, still wants a no-fly zone, and he wants regime change in Russia. And 20 years ago, you would have been laughed out of Congress and say, are you serious? You're trying to have regime change in Russia? And now Congressman Seth Moulton saying it out loud? This is this is bonkers. This is craziness over here. And our society goes and protests at Kavanaugh's house. 90% of the people wear a mask outside. I mean, come on. Uh, Oz, can you play the video while we talk? Um, but yeah, that, no, it's the, the other one, the, the video of, it doesn't matter. It's the same video. It's the same video. Um, but yeah, he's signing this into, into uh, that's the 40 billion Ukraine package, but he also signed the, the accelerated uh, Lend-Lease Act, which is part of the, the same. It's just part of the whole thing where he, it, it makes it easier for him to be able to just get money to Ukraine. And what you said is right, Pasta. Why aren't people protesting outside of these warmongers' it's homes? Because they're too busy protesting for uh, standing up to Roe v. Wade. Yeah. Because Americans only protest for symbolic gestures. They don't protest for any economic stuff. Have you guys noticed that? If it, if it was any other country, they would have they would be putting these people in jail. They would be burning banks. They would be doing something. Not that, you know, that necessarily would lend itself to anything. But if you disrupt the economic system while it's already, well, they're screwing it for you already, <clears throat> I think it, it, it would say something. But no, they're too busy uh, with pussy hat signs and pussy hats and signs and really, really cringe chants <laughs> that we saw yesterday. Um, they What were they saying? Uh, I, 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 I don't even want to repeat it. What? I can't even find the. <clears throat> <laughs> no, they. but it what was the yeah. first part. I can't F remember, your... but I know there's sec uh, something. <laughs> Justice Kavanaugh, you ain't shit. You can't uh, even find the. Fill in the blank. <laughs> you ain't like, you know what I'm saying? Isn't it crazy, fam, how George Carlin's prediction came true? Remember how, I mean, it's like, well, everything has come like, it's just changed. We've done a 180 on things. Back in the days, he used to make fun of people. He's like, oh, you know. Republicans with their abortion, they want to stop abortion. But as soon as you come out of the womb, you're on your own. Republicans don't give a damn about you. Well, what's going on right now with our children, especially in states like California, New York, and all these other crazy, is a crime against humanity in my mind. And the progressives are absent. They're absent. We're talking about hardcore data here. Receipts. We got it. And they're not even around, fam. They're absent. They're not even at the party. I mean, this is kind of like Watergate style kind of uh, collusion of sorts mm -hmm. that should blow the, the roof off everything right now. And they're not even talking about it, fam. They're not even going near it. Instead, they're going to go protest on an opinion piece over at Kavanaugh's house that hit up Alito, who were conservative judges. It's almost like I work. I'm working at McDonald's. But I'm going to go over to Burger King and yell how they're doing things. You know these conservative judges aren't going to be with you anyways. This is ludicrous. The, the, the party's lost. The party's gone. Oh, it's done. It's done. Yeah. That's it. In the progressive <laughs> movement? Oh, my Lord. They're the new liberals. They're the new liberals. They're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do this next section over on YouTube. We can only introduce our guests, let them say hello. And then direct all the traffic over to our Rockfin. Jilly Love, if you can put it in the chat, the Rockfin address, let's get people over there right now. Because um, as soon as we say this man's name, you know, I, I'm surprised that, that we, we, they haven't suppressed the hell out of the stream on YouTube. They probably have because we have his name up in there. Um, and he's going to come on and talk with us very shortly. Uh, Steve, you there, my friend? I am here, yeah. So let's just introduce, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Steve Kirsch is with us. If you don't know who Steve is, he invented the optical mouse years and years and years ago. But he's been the guy out there challenging, you know, the old saying, fam, put your money where your mouth is. That's what this man, Steve Kirsch, has been doing. He's been challenging anybody, putting up uh, up the moolah, millions of dollars. You want a debate? Let's go. You beat me in a debate. I'll give you the money. 
But Steve, have you had any takers as of late that we've missed? No, no, no. There's no public health authority anywhere in the world that will uh, uh, go on camera with me. Steve, where where can they find you? Everybody can find you on your Substack, right? I want to let the people at YouTube land know where they can find you before we leave YouTube. Yeah, stevekirsch.substack.com. And if you haven't subscribed to that, you don't know what you're missing. There's three people I get a lot of information from. Steve Kirsch is one of them. And uh, the guy's got uh, a, a great personality. He was uh, mocked by uh, Jimmy Kimmel for going, hi, I'm Steve, uh, while the crowd laughed while we were in D.C. covering it. It was a great speech then, and you even upped the ante with a great speech in L.A. So go check out all his work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to go over to Rockfin Only. That's our free speech platform. Uh, we're going to be talking with Steve Kirsch. Uh, it's going to be some valuable information, guys. We're going to have him on the morning show on Friday as well. But right now, it's combo coach time. So let's get over to Rockfin. We're leaving YouTube in five, in four. In three, in two, in one. Join us over at Rockland. Okay, we are back.